What's up everybody, it's your boy Rebel here, and from what I can tell from the comments section of a video I posted recently, a few of you out there are still having trouble getting that three stars on your island in Animal Crossing. So today, I'm gonna break down everything that I feel is an integral part in getting that three stars for your island. Because hey, let's face it, we all want three stars so we can get KK Slider to show up, so we can get terraforming, and start doing some really cool things with our island. Because who doesn't want to start doing cool things like adding pathways and waterfalls with stepping stones over areas that didn't have any water before. So first up, I kind of wanted to go over how I feel that scoring works for getting a three-star island. And if I were to guess, I'd have to say that scoring seems like it's accumulative. Like it adds up everything together to give you your score. As opposed to ranking everything individually and having like individual thresholds or criteria that you have to meet to get three stars, it seems to be a mix where certain things help more than other things will help which does also help to explain why so many people feel that different things will help you to get a three star island and everyone kind of talks from personal experience which isn't bad it just means that it's harder to fine tune and know what exactly you need to do to get three stars or it may mean it's a little bit easier than you may think and before i get into anything further i just want to remind you guys if you end up enjoying this video if you think i gave you any good tips to getting three stars please go ahead and drop that like and uh, if you want to subscribe feel free i mean hey we're just going to be playing animal crossing here what have you really got to lose right okay so getting back into getting your three star island and how everything seems to work accumulatively to give you that three stars and what that really means is yes you are aiming to go from a two star island to a three star island but the scoring is also it's not going to stop there you're going to want to get to a four star island and then eventually a five star island and what that means is you're going to want to keep up with everything if isabel is only talking about flowers or picking items up that doesn't mean that putting more fencing or furniture won't be helping your score because chances are adding those things will be helping your score and if they don't they will go towards helping you get that four or five star rating for your island and what that means is you are going to want to keep up with everything and everything on this list is going to consist of greenery furniture fencing clutter villagers and bridges and inclines so let's go ahead and break all of these down. First up, we got greenery, and greenery consists of flowers, trees, uh, I guess now shrubs, as well as weeds. So let's break greenery down even further. First, we got flowers. Now with flowers, as I like to say, don't buy, multiply. God, that was really stupid. Why did I say that? And what that means is you're going to want to breed flowers because when you breed flowers and you get hybrids, not only do they look better, not only are they cooler, but there is also a chance that hybrid flowers help your score more than normal flowers. Picture having 50 yellow flowers and then picture having 50 hybrids of black and oranges. If I were a programmer, I would probably think to make there be a multiplier or a higher point that you're getting for hybrid flowers because they are harder to obtain and they do make your island look more unique so you can buy a bunch of them but you can also buy enough to just start watering them and when you water them you're gonna want to do so in this sort of pattern right here and right here and of course as you can see right here so you're gonna want to set them up in this checkered pattern and water them and they will give you cool colors like this like this black and purple i think it looks pretty cool and chances are it does affect your score even better and then next on the list we got trees and we want foreign trees now i bet you're saying is your main fruit peaches no it's oranges and these are the only four orange trees i have on my island now that i've terraformed and sectioned everything off and been able to plant so many foreign fruit and the funny thing about this tip is isabel actually tells you this she says branch out i know it's a real funny pun better than mine um she tells you to branch out and get other types of trees so of course i have the oranges that were base on my island i have the peaches and then over here we got a bunch of apples and then bamboo which yes bamboo not found on your island counts as a foreign tree i would assume and lastly to go on the foreign tree list of course and probably most important you do not want to forget this one coconut trees and little pro tip you can actually plant them on things that you put sand on so if you want to do something like this very possible you know just when you can get coconuts you shake them you get two more coconuts 
coconuts, you replant them. You got yourself a lot of coconuts, you got yourself a lot of foreign fruit, and that all helps you get a three-star island. And next, shrubs, because shrubs are a new thing, and let me just tell you. I don't know. I have no idea when it comes to these things. They may help, they may not. Who knows? That ball's in your court when it comes to shrubs. Do what you will. And then lastly, we have weeds. Weeds might count as a negative, meaning that it's going to subtract points that you would be getting from more flowers and trees, meaning that you can actually keep weeds on your island if you remember my other three star easy getting three stars this area was all weeds i've taken the weeds from here but left them all over here and we have quite a bit of weeds right here and right over here not to mention a little bit down there kind of making that campsite seem more inconspicuous as well as that you can't see it from there but down there where the stepping stones were i had a lot more weeds but I'm guessing, because this is a lot of weeds. This has to be like 20 or 40. I'm guessing that the fact that I have so many flowers in random areas that it is negating the negative effect of the weeds, which means you can use weeds strategically while only facing a minimum drawback, meaning use weeds to decorate, but just have a lot of flowers to, to work against it and you'll be fine. However, if you feel like you're not getting three stars and you want to get rid of all of the weeds, you can always get them back when you go to Nook Miles Islands and just pick them up off the floor there and then use them to decorate. But I feel like weeds didn't really negatively affect my island. And next, moving on, we have furniture. Now, what you want to do is you want to get stuff from a matching set, like this table and those chairs, or like this table and these chairs and this bench and just some random cactus. And then what is this? A bug on a table. So, of course, what you're going to want to do is get a mix of DIY items, bot items, and Nook Miles items like this. A uh, street lamp that you can see twisting even though you can't see me. Or this street lamp. So this street lamp. Uh, purchased with Nook Miles. That signpost. Crafted. This. Bought. You want all the items that you can find. If they go together, great. If they look like they go together, that's okay. And if they actually do go together, my reasoning would lead me to believe that you may get a point bonus for matching items in a set. Like this table and the chairs and as you can see i have two chairs and this may what this means is that this second chair may not be giving me the same amount of points as this chair because it is a duplicate item so be weary of duplicate items they may continue to help just not as much as a new item. And being that I have one table and two chairs there, would also probably mean that having a black table with black chairs here, they may not be giving me duplicate score points, perhaps the score of a new item, but even more so, perhaps the score of a customized item, which may be even more points than a standard item. So being that I have this sign right there, this little house sign on that island, may count as a different item than this sign, with a forest on it and it may even be giving me more points because of that now i do say may maybe could because i'm not 100 percent sure but yeah i'm just doing the best i can it's not like i can break down the coding of the game or anything and then lastly when it comes to furniture there is placing furniture in people's yards. Now, when you lay down somebody's house lot, when you get your third, fourth, and fifth villagers, you'll notice it'll have you put furniture items in a space around that house. What I would be led to believe is that furniture is in those spots will grant a bonus towards your star rating on your island. So if you can, try to get those furniture items next to your neighbor's house. And if you can get them in a matching set, such as these two pink flamingos you may even be getting more points on top of that which may be helping you even more and then next up on the list we have fencing and for fencing you just what you want to use as much as many types as you can as many as you can afford to make of different types go ahead and do that as you can see right in front of me i have the simple wooden fence right here i have the hedges behind it i have the brick of course the simple fencing continues up here i did use shrubs to separate the path why does Raoul look so happy i use the shrubs to replace fencing but then right here i have lattice fencing and you can see i have use it to line this micro environment this micro environment i use them even when i just have trees making a area i use it to help divide it up 
even more. You want to put as much fencing as you possibly can. And I have a tip at the end regarding fencing. Actually, just a, a, a big tip that'll help you get that three-star rating at the end of the video. But I do have to go over all of these points first. What everything that builds up your score is. So please stick around to the end of the video. Drop a like if I've already if you already feel like I've been giving you good tips. Go ahead and smash that like button right now if you want. I don't know. So moving on from fencing, we have clutter. Now what clutter refers to is items on the floor and that is going to be tools, crafting items. So clutter, clutter will look like this, that. That is clutter. Crafting supplies like wood, stone, clutter. This fence, these eggs, clutter. Shells, not clutter. Tree branches that just fall from trees, are clutter as well weeds may count as clutter i'm not entirely sure so plant your uh... so plant your my golden slingshot i can't believe golden items break that is a dip and it's just the cocoa tree so tools you're gonna want to display like this axe it's going to say place here, and you're going to say you betcha, and you're going to put it down as more of an item than a tool. Just like that golden watering can right there, and just like this fishing rod, and these two fishing rods. If you put them as a display item, I don't think that negatively affects your score. If you think it does, go ahead and just pick them up and put them in your storage. But I do not think that they affect your score. So if you're just dropping them, place them. Put your turnips in your house. Keep all your uh, crafting supplies in your house as well. I know it's tough to keep all your crafting supplies inside and not at an easy to access location outside, but that may negatively be affecting your score. And we are getting closer. When it comes to the next thing, villagers the more of the merrier i had eight at the time of getting three stars and four stars however it may have been seven with one in the sold state but the more villagers you have the better in general and you could have up to 10 so just keep getting villagers keep making spots for them if you feel like you don't have any room for them just wait and follow the tip i'm about to give you and that will help you and for the final thing that may or may not be playing in effect in your three star rating are bridges like this beautiful bridge right here this beautiful incline right here this beautiful incline right here and this beautiful bridge right here and hey let's throw in this beautiful bridge right here and hey let's throw in this beautiful bridge right there too i only had one bridge and two inclines but there is a possibility that it does help your island not overloading bridges like just putting bridges all the way up and down your river using a bridge or an incline to give villagers access to an area of the map that they previously did not have access to may help your score meaning that if you have a bridge over here but you didn't have a bridge connecting this area of land another bridge may end up helping your score because it can get your villager over to this part of the island over here as you can see flora's right over here and the only reason she could get over here was because of a bridge. And that may give you a better score. But I am not entirely sure about that one. So don't take my word for it. If that doesn't help you, don't hold it against me. But it will help your island look better. It'll give it better flow. And it may help. So hey, what have you really got to lose? And I know what you're saying. Rebel... I want to terraform to make a river that I want to put a bridge over like you did up here because th that piece of land and water wasn't there. I want to terraform and then add the bridges. I want to terraform and then add the incline like this. This whole expanse of land from this cafe to this seating area was all down here, but I brought this whole cliff up and then added these inclines. Yes, but I did have an incline coming up here before and what building that initial incline is going to do like i had one right here what that's going to do is it is going to help you to line up and divide sections of your map which leads me to the big tip the big tip how to line up and divide areas of your map and what you are going to i'm not going to be doing it right now but i will be making a video of me going into a whole in-depth process of me turning this from this diner possibly these trees i might leave this little area right here but this whole playground area 
and this whole pathway leading from the airport. I do not like it. I don't care for it. And I am going to redo all of it. And these are the steps that I will be taking. So feel free to just wait for the video. But if you are impatient, I'm just going to give you all of these tips right now. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of everything. And that means picking up all of the fences, digging up all of the flowers, picking up every single item. And if you had custom designs to make a pathway, you are going to want to pick all of those up. And all you're going to be left with is the trees. And then you are going to pick the trees of all of their fruit all across your island. Get as much fruit as possible. And you are going to dig up every single tree that you come across. Every single last tree you are going to pick up. If you don't have room for them, you can go ahead and replant them somewhere else far away. Just make sure you will have enough fruit eventually to pick them up again and move them to where you want. Now, after step one, what we are going to want to do is step two, which is going to be lining an area with holes. And what these holes are going to be used for is burying the trees that you had just dug up. But what those holes are going to do is they are going to divide and line up micro environments and potential pathways on your island now for example i had a very cheap bridge right here right away as soon as i could make a bridge i put a very cheap one and then i had a normal tree here with a normal tree there and they actually continued on on flat ground this cliff was not here keep in mind and the trees came back to about here and then went off at this angle i had those trees there with the exception of this one right in front of me and those trees made a line going against the cliff up to where the incline was and then i had more trees forming the line by about where the the servers you outfit is all the way down connecting with that tree right there in ken's yard i might have even had one more right there and one tree might have been in the right spot so i might have left it but what you're gonna do want to do is dig up those holes in a line and kind of map out where you are going to want these pathways to be and yes you're not going to be able to lay a pathway or an incline right away but what i did with those trees and those trees alone just digging them up and putting them in a new line that design lives on perpetually in this pathway and incline sort of setup and these trees right here are still creating this pathway that was initially here initial initial uh, initially albeit right here these trees were a little bit higher up probably about right here and there's not a pathway right there but i moved the trees down and created this sort of area right here as a sort of hidden garden area but anything that i had trees i had used to create a pathway that has now become an actual path with the terraforming and with those holes you can space them two apart such as this or you can also go for a one apart sort of design, which does make it a lot tighter and a lot tougher to maneuver, but it does create a more dense look, which is also very unique and very cool. All right, now once you get those whole spaced one or two spaces apart, what you're gonna wanna do is bury the trees. The reason you wanna pick them up instead of, instead of cutting them down and using new fruit is you can actually get an instant look at what it will look like. It's already gonna be done. The tree's already fully grown and you are just going to be planting it and boom, you instantly get that area developed exactly as you want. And once you do that, you can go ahead and use any extra fruit that you have to go ahead and plant any remaining trees that you may need to plant in that area. And now step number four, you are going to want to use fencing to line off an area. So if I had gone ahead and planted these flowers or had kind of set this area up, setting up this fence is going to help to divide that area up right away. And with this, you could just do fencing. You could do fencing in front of the trees, such as right there. You could do fencing in front of the trees, behind the trees, you can even go for it between the trees look if you want but once you get those trees set up you're gonna want to go ahead and put the fencing around you can put them on the inside of the trees so you kind of know the smaller area you could be working with and then once you realize that's not enough space you could go ahead and move the fencing outwards to between the trees such as there or even on the outside of the trees to give you even more area and then once you get the fencing you're gonna want to put furniture items inside these little micro areas micro environments the little micro environments that you went ahead and created you're gonna want to go ahead and put in those furniture items that are gonna match or go ahead and put flower beds and just plant your flowers in this checkered pattern you don't have to have them 
under dirt because of course you can't terraform yet but you can do that after the fact you could just set down all of the flowers where you're going to want to plant the flower areas and then once you get terraforming you can go back dig them all up and put the dirt under it but then once you get these micro environments set up you can go ahead and plant flowers put furniture and the fencing and the trees have all worked in unison to help you with your island and it really does it helps to add greenery because you have more space for greenery you have more space for furniture and you have more space for fencing and that's the trifecta that we're trying to hit here and most importantly it really does help to space out the map i get a lot of comments asking me why does my island look so big it's because i've used these tips to help set areas up i've lined the trees I've lined the areas with holes, I've planted the trees to line the areas, use the fencing to further divide them, and then put furniture and flowering inside of them, and it really does make it seem really big. This area could have three random trees in it, and you could say that, like, I don't really have much room right here, but you get fencing and stack in tightly fit furniture items, and yeah, this is, this is the same exact size island as everybody else, and those are the steps you're gonna wanna take to really utilize your space and really give you more room, and I think that's gonna wrap it up for this one so let me know if any of these tips helped if they did please drop that like button i'm really excited for you guys i know i know a lot of you have been getting three stars and saying this worked and that worked and that's great that's wonderful really glad can't wait to hear more success stories please let me know if any of these tips helped you get a three star and hey if you're going for that five star then go ahead and do me a favor and this might be doing you a favor too if you want to show your island off i'm willing to give five star tours i have no reason not to with the exception that i only have about 465 subscribers at the moment so if you do if, if you think like hey this rebel cat's a cool cat i wouldn't mind him giving a tour of my five star island well i would want people to see your five star island and what is gonna help that happen is you smashing a like button hitting the sub sub button this that's what i call it i don't know if you noticed the subscribe button it's really hard for me to say that hit that sub sub button see it's just so much easier and by doing that you're gonna show youtube that hey people are digging this guy's content push it out there more i had one video got like 30,000, almost 40,000 views amazing this one these tips should really help you a lot more than the other one i mean let's face it the last video was easy three and four stars but it was just me giving a tour of my island and explaining what i did this is more explaining the system and this should really help you get it. And, you know, I just, I want to see the community grow. I want to see everybody having fun. And what better way to do that than by helping the community grow and having fun. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thanks for watching. I really do hope you all enjoyed. And until next time, goodbye.